Hello, I'm Greg Redke at Redke Mods, and welcome to another episode. In today's episode, we'll be unboxing what's in this bubble wrap right here. And before we continue, this might be the beginning of a whole new series that has yet to be named. And if so, this is welcome to episode one of it. Um, I'm not sure what to name it yet. Probably going to be, well, I'll tell you in a second. What's in this wrapping right here is the reason why I want to start the series. Um, I've actually been wanting to do this for a very long time now. Um, long before there was other YouTubers doing this. Because um, I've been collecting these, hardcore collecting these since about 2007. But I stopped collecting them probably by 2010-ish. Uh, I did make a few custom ones after that. But I really stopped buying them by about 2010 and I started getting back into it and buying them again. And I still have all my collection except the ones that have been stolen or I've given away. Um, I've had a few stolen and um, I'm not happy over that. But of my collection, I still have all my original line, even though two of them have sinking problems right now and are at Call and Misters, AKA Dust Dude ones getting fixed. And this is actually another one of those. One of the two that's broken happens to be the same model as this. Why am I talking about? Welcome to the first episode of the iPod series. I, I, I might call it the iPod series, but welcome to it. Right here we have what Dank Pods, the YouTuber, would call the big chungus. This is the thickest, heaviest iPod ever made. And, uh, it's actually thicker and heavier than the first generation. And this is my second one, and I actually have three now. This is my second one. The third one's coming in the mail because this one's supposed to be so nice that I don't really want to use it. And um, I usually use my iPods. Now my first one uh, had been upgraded in the day with a 40 gig hard drive from a fourth generation iPod and uh, a, a new battery. Um, it worked great until I uh, plugged into one of my custom FireWire chargers I'd custom built myself. And I guess it sent a jolt through the data lines. It never synced again after that. It also killed my third generation syncing capabilities uh, for my third generation 40 gig. So I've got to find another one of those. Let's call and can figure out where it got fried at. So needless to say, I don't use those chargers anymore. <laughs> Um, I'm not good at wiring apparently, or I don't know what happened to them. They just, they just stopped syncing after I, uh, charged them on those chargers. So, yeah, but this one right here is supposed to be complete in box. It's not sealed in box, but let's open it up. I already partially opened it a little bit, but not completely, as you can see for Mac Yak. I just finished filming Mac Yak, the live stream today. Uh, episode 52 and if you're not subscribed go subscribe to them I'll put a link right up here for it but I just peeled this back a little bit so you could sort of see it on camera now I'm actually unboxing it and we're going to actually unbox this up close but here it is. The box is in okay shape. It's a little dirty, a little, little shelf wear on it, but it's in pretty good shape. This is supposed to come with everything in it, and the iPod's supposed to be near mint. It's supposed to have light scratches on it. It was used lightly, according to the seller. In the pictures, it looked pretty lightly used in the uh, um, description for the listing there. And here is thumbnail picture, uh, but it is just, it's pretty neat. I, I haven't had a box this size with an iPod in it since my very first iPod, which was an HP iPod, uh, 40 gig. But uh, this, I, I, I threw that box away years ago before I started collecting them. And now I wish I still had it. But this is my first boxed iPod is since probably 2008. 
um, when I bought the second generation classic, which was 6.5 gen, seventh gen, I don't know what, what they were calling it really, the 120 gig. Um, that was my last box one, and then I had a seventh gen, uh, which I bought used. Long story on that, I'll go into detail about it in the future, in a future episode. But right now, we're going to be unboxing this here, and uh, it, it, looks, it looks good. The listing said that it should be complete. The serial number should match. Um, and usually these things with everything, I hope everything's in it, but I'm not 100% sure. We won't know until we open it. Usually these go unsealed, okay? Uh, torn open, usually these go for maybe a thousand bucks on eBay because people are crazy. I'm not going to pay a thousand bucks for this. I got this for 189 bucks. In fact, I got this for the exact same price as my 2009 MacBook, the uh, mid-2009 one. Same price with shipping, identical same price. But uh, this thing right here, uh, I know you guys want to see it open, but I, I just want to really get it out there. This thing should be complete. There's another one on eBay currently for 350 bucks, which is in slightly worse shape and doesn't have everything in it. This should have everything in it. And this will be just like unboxing a new one somewhat. And uh, well, let's get to it. Okay guys, yeah, I know my top half of my face is probably being cut off right now. I want you to be able to just see this. This is the box right here. 20 gig Mac edition. It's what this looks like right here. Okay. We got all the specs right here. Everything you'd need to know about what it is required to have to run is right here on the bottom. And uh, here is the serial number right there. We'll ma see if that matches for real. The system features, uh, it originally could hold up to 4,000 songs. And uh, with a 40 gig hard drive, if you upgrade one of these things, it can hold 10,000 songs. And actually this could hold 5,000 songs after uh, AAC came out. Uh, but originally MP3 formatted, it was 4,000 songs. And uh, this only needs a Macintosh with a FireWire port, an OS 9.22 or 10.1.4 or later. So yeah, it's got 2002 Apple copyright on it. Let's unbox it and see what it looks like. And Apple went to a lot lighter packaging when the fifth generation came out, which was a lot more eco-friendly. This isn't what you would call eco-friendly, and this also was it came with a lot more things in it than the uh, later iPods did. So let's see what it came with. So yeah, this is the side that doesn't have the iPod in it yet. Okay, so it doesn't come with the original headphones. I can tell you that much. This is a set of air ear pods for the iPhone 5 and these are knockoffs. So not the complete original experience here but these are brand new. So they're not full of earwax but these are probably knockoffs. There's no Apple logo on them. Oh well. But let's see what else it came here. First we'll go in this booklet right here. And this should have all the iPod materials in it. I don't see any Apple stickers. Got the limited war warranty, um, the software license agreement, iPod at a glance. This should fold out and make a really neat little poster to hang up, as we can see right here. And there's the other side of it. Pretty cool. It comes with the original iTunes disc. This is, it doesn't say which iTunes is on it. 
Uh, but it doesn't look like it's ever been opened. I think it's still sealed. I don't see any cuts or anything in it. Comes with the original disc. And then here's the user's guide, which uh, basically tells you how to connect it and stuff. And we are connecting into an, a Snow iBook G3. We can see there. We'll try to connect this up and see if it will sync. But we got that. Then it came with a case. And this case is a little worse for wear. It's been used. The clip is about to snap off. But it's the original case. You never see these anymore because they all broke and people threw them away. Um, this one's on its way out, but might be fixable because it's still one piece. It was neat. It even had a, a little embroidered Apple tag right here. You just clip this onto your belt loop and it would work. It comes with, is this the original? Yes, it comes with the original power brick. Uh, the earlier ones had plastic on the back of the metal connectors right here. So this is actually probably more for first generation. It says copyright 2001 instead of 2002 on it. So it's probably a first generation power brick, but will work just the same. And it also came with a European plug, because uh, back in the day, they apparently shipped with European adapters also. So this is the official one, and it's got a fuse in it right here, which is pretty cool. So we will definitely be hooking this thing up and seeing if it still works, but right now, let's just set this stuff back in here so I can keep it all together as we are about to get to the big deal here. The iPod itself it is not in the centerpiece. That scared, scared me for a second. Oh, it does come with the original headphones and they are filthy. These are indeed probably the originals which is kind of neat, but uh, I'm definitely not putting them in my ears. So that's the original headphones right there. It comes with an original Firewire cable. This is the same Firewire cable, basically, that I use to sync Macs uh, in Firewire disk mode. I've been using the same cable since 2007 when I bought my first second generation. So, yeah. But the iPod's supposed to be right here. He, for some reason, put it right here. A little weird. But let's see what condition it's in. I would call that near mint. It's got light scratches on it, but this is probably worth what I paid for it, for sure. I would definitely buy another one. I did not go to this in this shape. This is nice. But does it turn on under its own power? Holds not on. He tested it. He said the battery worked. It's not, not doing anything. So the thing that is the easiest way to tell the first from the second, other than the fact that the first had an actual moving uh jog wheel here instead of a scroll wheel is the top was different. Um, this part right here was all white and uh, the switch, um, the tab was like, the little raised piece right here was like over here and flat and um, there was no firewire port cover right here. But we can, this has probably not been plugged in many times. We can easily lift that up there, okay? Plug a firewire cable into it. Like so. And then we can pull out the power brick I just put away, because I'm stupid. And then can pull this power brick out, plug that in, I'll plug it in the wall, 
and see if it powers on. It is indeed powering on. Hard drive spinning up. Now this, who knows, might need a new battery. That might be the reason why he, uh, why it's it's not turning on. I don't know if you can see this. Um, Sometimes in certain lightings, the uh, first and second generation screens look inverted, like in the sunlight and stuff, uh, when the backlight is on. But it seems to be working. Settings about fuels powers. Fuel, fuel, fuel Bowers iPod. It has 4,000 songs already on it. Okay, I'm sure all these are copyrighted, but it's already got music on it. Uh, let's go to songs. We'll just pick something random. I've never heard of half of these. Here's one that I probably heard of. This is probably the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I can't play more than like a brief second of this, but let's see if it does indeed still work. Hard drive spins up, volume all the way up. It does indeed still work. The original headphones still work. It's pretty cool. So originally I was going to uh, plug this into a Mac and sync it with some new songs, but since it's already synced to another uh, library, I'm not going to do that right now. What I'm going to do is see what's on here that I want to keep because free music's free music. I have them now, I want them. <laughs> so if there's anything on here that I don't have, I'm going to have to transfer them off first. But I will plug it into a, a power book just to see if it does work. We're going to try to keep this era specific um, and try to plug it into something that would have been around the same time this thing was out, um, which the closest thing I have right now is actually sitting behind the camera right now, and that's a 17-inch early 2003 PowerBook G4. So we'll try to sync it up in that and see what it does in iTunes. Um, and we'll do future experiments. We're probably not going to be doing it on this, though. I, I can't remember if I mentioned it in the intro, but I did buy another one. And it's supposed to be in similar condition, believe it or not but it doesn't come with the original box and stuff. Oh, it reminds me, serial number. PMMC. It is the same box. This is the original box it came with. Pretty cool. And it is so shiny and nice. This one's in better shape than my first one was anyway, um, which is really cool. I'm, I'm really happy with this purchase. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go grab a, my power book real quick. We'll actually plug it in and see if it works. Let's see if it's still holding a charge after we unplug it. Yep, the battery's still working. It says it's already 75%. I highly doubt that. Uh, but the battery is holding some kind of charge. So that's cool. So yeah, I'll um, turn this off and we'll uh, go grab the power book. Okay, so I've got my early 2003 17-inch PowerBook G4 hooked up, and I want to try a little experiment and see if this thing will sync in OS 9.2.2. Uh, it's got the latest software update on it, which is 1.5, so it's probably not going to work. We'll have to do this in Tiger or Leopard. But I just want to see if it will see it and what it will do to it. And before you ask about this thing running OS 9.2.2? Yes, it can run OS 9.2.2 thanks to OS 9 Lives. They have a hacked version that works. And this is basically the most powerful mobile platform uh, OS 9 machine you could use. 
Um, even though it never officially supported OS 9, it runs fine. You just have to select it out the uh, boot menu. So let's see if it does it. And the optical drive of this thing's dead. I think. It likes to make a lot of noises. There we go, there's 9.2.2. So we'll let this thing boot up into 9.2.2, and then we'll try to load it up in iTunes just to see if it works. Here we go, we're booted up. It's finishing loading up a few things. And we should be getting ready to uh, be able to find iTunes on here. There it is. I've never opened it before. Let's see what it does. Here we go, we are running version 2.0.4, it probably won't do it, but let's see what happens when we plug this in. And this kind of reminds me of the very first iPod commercial where the guy's dancing to uh, Take California by the Propeller Heads. I haven't seen that co commercial in years. I used to have it on my video iPod. Uh, but uh, if you want to check it out, it's right up here. Uh, it, it's a great commercial. And I think he's syncing it off of a G4 Titanium. We're a little bit newer than that here, but it's still the same idea. So what he, he did is he, he set it up. He would have just plugged it right in the first generation. The second generation, you've got to hold the flap open. Then... It starts spinning up. Let's see what it does. Should go into disk mode. We are in disk mode. It is connecting and it brought up all the songs instantly. Holy moly. Honestly, I wonder if iTunes would let me play these. It did work. We're in OS 9 running this. Now, a lot of the stuff I've not heard of before. Wow, there's a good amount of music on here. There's still five gigs free on here, and there's 4,004 songs. So I wonder if any of these are AAC. Because I don't think OS 9.2 is supposed to be able to see those. But neat. Um... Of course, I can't play anything very long, but I am curious to see if it will play something. I doubt it will from iTunes. Yeah, it won't. But that is cool. It, it automatically synced up, as we can see here. It is indeed in disk mode. Do not disconnect. So what we're going to do now it even shows up right here. Fuel Bowers iPod. Okay. So what we're going to do is eject it. Okay. You apparently can't eject it that way. How do you eject it? Here. Well, here's the... Okay. Eject. Here we go, we're ejected, and that's it really. 
iTunes just worked. Now, I just want to see what happens if you do it in iTunes 9 or something like that, just for the heck of it. So I'm going to restart this real quick and just do it one more time and see what goes on. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I decided to skip straight to iTunes 10 and Leopard, and let's see what happens. Now, the nice thing about iTunes is they've always supported every iPod model ever made. So this would even work uh, even in Catalina with the right dongles and stuff if you needed dongles. Um, it would work right in the operating system, the sync. But this would work all the way through iTunes 12 with no issues. It's just, it's fun to use it in older ones on older devices. So this thing's kicking into disk mode right now. Once it restarts, the battery died. So it's got a first kick, boot in, and then boot back out. So now we are connected. It is starting to sync up, as we can see right here. And this should be seeing it pop up in a second. There it is. Fuel Bowers iPod. There we go, it worked. Everything seems to be working totally fine on it and I'm very happy. I, uh, of course, will need to uh, take the music off of this. I might restore this back to the original OS and just keep it as a display piece with the original box uh, because this battery's, I, I think it's, it's going. Um, so it's not going to run much longer, but it runs perfectly right now. And in a future video, we will indeed be upgrading one of these. I'm going to be upgrading uh, the, my third one that I just bought that should be in the mail actually tomorrow or the next day. We'll be upgrading that to a 40 gig hard drive and a new 2200 milliamp hours battery. And uh, then we're going to be playing with it some. I want to uh, put, possibly put iPod Linux on it, which you can't get anymore, but I have a lot of backups from back in my day when I was modding these things, crazy. And um, I also will be putting Rockbox on it. And I want to do something really fun that probably has never been on YouTube with Rockbox, because you can do it on iPod Linux too, but it's a lot harder and it doesn't look as good. Uh, but I will be um, doing something really neat in that video, and uh, it's, it's just going to be really cool. I hope you guys are excited to see what's up in the future for these iPod videos. Um, like I said, this is probably the start of a new series, but I haven't nailed down the name yet, and uh, it's it currently will not have an intro logo uh, video and stuff, and uh, I don't know how long I'll keep this series going. Uh, this might just be a playlist for all I know yet. So um, we'll, we'll take it as it goes, and we'll, we'll play around with it and make this uh, as fun as possible. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget, I am now sponsored by SellYourMac.com, so if you have an Apple device you'd like to sell, just go to SellYourMac.com slash RockKMods and sell them something. It will help me out, and it will help you out because you'll be making money. And also, don't forget, I do now have a Patreon where I release these videos a day early if you want to check them out. Sometimes I re release them even earlier than that. Sometimes it's a, not exactly a day early. It all depends on how long it takes to render and stuff. But usually it's a day early, uh, and sometimes it's even earlier than that. Sometimes I have multiple videos on there early. When I finish a video, I upload it to there first. So if you want to see those videos first, go over there, help me out, check it out. It's a good old fun time. Oh, look here. I actually have the other cable. <laughs> this thing has been through the ringer. But this is the other... Um, cable like this one. The first generation had a, a white solid one that went all the way up to here. It looked very different. The second generation had these transparent pieces here. And this came with my second generation um, iPod. 
and um, I've been using it ever since. I have another one almost identical to this, which was the later Apple one, which this piece is white. But this one's the one I've been syncing with the longest. Um, and it still works today, and I've been using it uh, almost nonstop for the last few years, no issues whatsoever. I wish Apple still made cables like this. Anyway, getting back onto topic, don't forget I do have a Patreon. Come and support me if you'd like. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that was a big... Um, anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and this has been a Rod K Mods video. By the way, these knockoff ear pods are hot garbage. They're horrible. They sound terrible. And they are they even came kinked wrapped in the packaging. And uh the, the left ear is so bad that um it, it just pops constantly and then there's no bass. These things are terrible. I gotta get good headphones for this thing. Then again, uh, the other one might be coming with good headphones. I don't know. But, um, yeah, these things are junk. I'm tossing these. One more thing that I forgot uh, wasn't included in this box was the remote, which should have been in the box. But that's not a big deal. Um, a lot of those didn't survive with these things. Um, actually, usually they probably left them in the box and if they tossed the box they tossed, tossed it with them but I do actually have the original remote that goes with one of these it might actually be next door I'll have to look but I have the original remote so I might end up with this thing complete in box eventually <laughs> but yeah so you guys spoke and you decided to make this an official series for the channel and um I decided to re-render the video so you guys could see the new intro, which is coming up right now.